you excited about the word today? All right, here we go. I, I, I love when he just sets the table and then we can just kind of slide right into what he wants to say. And so I, I just, I would encourage you, don't change gears. Let's just stay right where we're at and let's just set the table, uh, or he has set the table, and let's just, let's just enter right in to the word and what he wants to say to us today. Um, we, uh, are, we wanted to finish the end of the year. Amy uh, just did an incredible job laying a foundation of faith, and uh, I just appreciate so much her taking what can be so complex and sometimes, and we make it, we just overcomplicate faith in following Jesus. Can you say it? like it's it's tough? It's hard sometimes in the sense that uh, in the world that we live in and just keeping our eyes on Jesus. But uh, nobody ever said it was easy. But but we just overcomplicate faith and believing and trusting in Him. And I'm so thankful that when she talked about man, the kingdom come. Our faith there has to be a simplicity of our faith when it comes to walking with Jesus. And uh, we don't need to overcomplicate and and make that thing so complex. When He says, "If you believe in Me." you'll live forever. If you believe in me, you'll do greater works than I've done. And, and so just the simple things of laying hands on the sick and we see them recover. If we, uh, if we believe that there's a place in our life where, of brokenness, he is the one who restores all things, that we can believe and trust that. And man, we are going through something as a marriage. Man, you can come together and where two or three are gathered together, he is in your midst and you can accomplish anything. Like there's this, the, and, and his word comes alive, but faith activates that. So I kind of want to build on that, but I also want to take a few months back. Do you remember how we started the year talking about the kingdom? Man, it was kingdom wild. If, uh, if, if I would encourage you, go back and, and listen to those messages. The Lord just directed us this year uh, in 2021. And, and I was a little nervous because I like thinking in fours or sixes or maybe twos and, 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 and one-time messages. Like when I think, okay, we want to communicate this in this amount of time. And this is, get this, this is what the Lord said. He goes, Michael, you just, you just do this until I tell you to stop. And I went, What? Are you sure? And he goes, yeah, I'm God. You're not. Do what I said. And I said, okay, yes, sir. Let's go for it. And that's what began to happen. And then he, he said the, the same kind of thing. He said, Michael, I want you to end there. You started the year with the kingdom. Let's end the year with the kingdom. And so when I was praying just a moment ago, I was praying specifically about what God wants to speak to us individually. You, you may be a guest here today and just checking it out. And man, we welcome you. We're so glad you're here. But this might not be your home. You may be checking it out or visiting with somebody, and, and you may not even live in Villarica. I'm sorry, because it's the best place to live on the face of the globe, but, but, um, but God has got a word for you. Like, he wants to say something to you, and then he's also saying something in our church. There's just this beautiful thing about being a part of a fellowship, about being a part of a local church and what he is saying to the church. So every time you pull up to the table of God's word, you can expect something to speak directly to you, but you can also expect the word of the Lord to be something for what you're a part of. Our significance, this isn't a part of the message, it's just extra, but the part of the significance of what, of what God is doing isn't just what he wants to do in me individually, but what he's, my significance is connected to what I'm a part of. Does that make sense? Like your gifts and, and what you bring to the table are awesome, but they're not just for you. Therefore, how that's expressed, connected in the body of Christ. That's why when you come to a church or come to a local church, if you don't get connected other than sitting in a chair, if the chair becomes your destination, then there's part, that you're, there's part of the fellowship that you're missing. The church, yeah, somebody's excited about that. It's probably a dream teamer. They serve it up and they give and they invest their life in this place. And they know the power of, of what it takes. But if we're not careful, we will turn the local church into a quick trip. They've got every flavor slurpy and they're good for a stop, but we don't, we don't invest our lives and sink deep down into it. Now, I don't want to live at quick trip. I mean, it's cool for getting in there and getting out, but that's not where I want to dwell. We were, we were created. Come on, the, whole, the God, God of the universe dwells within us and we were created to dwell together in the, in the local church. Now, I'm not sleeping here, like not dwell like our lock-in, our crazy teenagers had a lock-in here the other night. It still smells like teenager in here. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but normally after lock-ins, it does, but it smells good today. But, but there is this thing that God wants to do in us, but in, it, like in us individually, but it ain't just about my, it isn't just about my house. 
It's not just about what he wants to do in me and what he's doing in my life. It's about what he's doing in our lives together. And there's been a, there's been a great disconnect for a lot of people, not here, because you're here, obviously, but we've seen this in the body of Christ where there's almost been a gap between what God is doing in me and what he's doing in me in my church. And I believe that we're in a season where God is calling people back to the house, the place that he's called them. And we're going to see God do something absolutely amazing through the local church in the coming time. And so I'm so excited about what that means. But that is his kingdom come. The reality of his kingdom is not just experienced in my own walk with the Lord. It's experienced in community. It's experienced in the body of Christ as we, as we come together. Go through, if you're a life gator, go through a tough time. See what happens around you. Go through, go through the loss. I've watched it happen over the last few months as we've, if we've watched people transition from this life to the next. And I've watched life gators love like nobody loves. Like, go just lean in. I see families shaking their heads because they've experienced it firsthand. That's the power of community. That's the power of kingdom connection. And that's how we get to experience the kingdom of God, not just in my own life, but in the, the context of the local church. Mark 1, we started with this verse at the beginning of the year. Mark 1, 15 through 20. This is Jesus announcing his kingdom. He's saying, guys, get ready. This thing's about to go down, and I'm here to bring it to, to you're going to see it in its fullness. Now, I want you to understand something. We kind of read this as history, but I want you to think for just a moment as the people of God who have been looking forward to this for thousands of years. Generation after generation after generation, they knew something inside was coming, like they knew it in their hearts. Something's coming, something's coming, something's coming. And then there were prophets and there were people speaking to it saying something's coming, something's coming, something's coming. And then the something that's coming is now standing in front of them saying, ding, 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 it's time I'm here. And I just want you to think about like the, 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 the people of God were so pregnant with this expectation that the kingdom was coming. And then this is what Jesus says. He says, his message was this, at last the fulfillment of the age has come. It's time for the realm of God's kingdom to be experienced in its fullness. Notice he didn't say you're gonna watch it. You're not gonna look at it. It's not just gonna be something that you, that, that's passive, but he said you're gonna get to experience it in its fullness. Here's the question, cool question. Are you experiencing the kingdom of God in its fullness in your life right now? Because anything less than that is not what Jesus came to deliver. Anything less than that is thinking and looking as though this was something that he said for them, but it's not something he says for me. We haven't made it personal, or maybe we did it one time, but we're not experiencing the fullness of God right now. And can I just tell you, if we're just all honest and t you know, shame the devil, tell the truth, shame the devil, you're in church, tell the truth. We all have places in our lives where we're not experiencing the fullness of the kingdom. The question is, what are we doing with those areas? What is our choice? Are we in a place of indecision? Are we in a place of, of indifference? Are we a place where, of compromise where we're like, oh, this is okay? But Jesus came to say, hey, I want you to experience the fullness of my kingdom in every area of your life, not just part of it. He says, okay, so this is how. Turn your lives back to God and put your trust in the hope-filled gospel. Very simple. Now listen, I love counseling and I love therapy and I love uh, prayer meetings and I love fasting and I love revival and I love all the different things. I love reading my Bible, obviously. If your pastor didn't like reading your Bible, you need to go find another church. Um, there's things that I love to do in my walk with the Lord, but he didn't say, he didn't say all those things were gonna, were gonna be that. He said, if you will turn your eyes on Jesus and put your confidence in the gospel. What is the gospel? Jesus died to save sinners, that we have all fallen short of the glory of God, but in his goodness and in his grace, he saved me, he graced me, and he assigned me with a purpose and a destiny. That's the gospel, and it doesn't get any better than that. We don't need a new gospel. We don't need a new approach to the gospel. The gospel's the gospel, and it will be until we get to heaven. And when we get to heaven, guess what we're gonna be celebrating? Not the new gospel that, that somebody invented in 2022 because we needed a fresh look at the gospel. No, we're gonna be celebrating. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
I am so thankful in a world that gets crazier and crazier, we have a God that is consistent, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he says, he says, put your hope, put your confidence in the gospel. That word, turn your back to God. I love the way the passion paraphrases it because we're so scared of the word repent. But that's what it means. It means to stop, stop looking this way and look this way. You ever, you ever been trying to have a conversation with your spouse and you know they're there, but they're not listening? And you just have to, have, sometimes you just have to go, hey, look at me. Put your, right here. Look at me. And that's what Amy says to me because she, I'm there, but I'm not listening sometimes. And she's like, hello, where are you? And I'm like, I'm right here. Where do you mean where I'm at? What did I just say? Um, Holy Spirit, please tell me what she just said because I don't, I, I don't remember. And here's, here's the deal. Guys, I think, I think sometimes we get used to, through familiarity or through, through just kind of lackadaisicalness, we lose the urgency of the kingdom. And we are in the car and we're, we're hearing God say something and we're hearing these different things, uh, but, but, or maybe we see the mouth moving, but we're not, it's not piercing our hearts because we haven't positioned ourselves to hear the urgency of the kingdom. Do you realize there's a real heaven and a real hell that every day we live is life or death? Maybe not for you, but for somebody else, it's life or death. Right now, there are more people dying and going to hell than there are dying and going to heaven. That's not the fullness and the urgency of the kingdom that he brought, to play, brought into being. And we can close our eyes and we can think, well, it's good. And man, it sure is good at LifeGate. And it is, it's beautiful. Man, it sure is good at my house. But can I just tell you, there's more. So we're thankful for what has been. We celebrate where we are, but we look ahead with urgency and expectation. We can't fall asleep. We can't get lackadaisical. We can't get distracted. There's, just an urgent, there's an urgency of the kingdom that we have to share. There's things happening in heaven that he's laying in place and getting organized that we need to be a part of. And he's, he's done everything that needs to happen for us to do that. You weren't just here to live life. You were here to live the kingdom life. You weren't here just to have a marriage. You're here to have a kingdom marriage. You weren't here just to have kids. You were here to have kingdom kids. When you go on vacation, you weren't here just to go on vacation. You were here to have a kingdom vacation. You're here, we're here to have kingdom worship. We're here. So what does this kingdom, what does the kingdom look like in every area of my life? It looks like heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, so there's this pretty cool thing that happens when the local church gathers together and we worship, holy, holy, Ellis is much better than me, but holy, golly, that's tongues. <laughs> Don't judge my spiritual language. <laughs> Worthy is the land. What, what is that? It's a glimpse of heaven. Why does healing happen? It's a glimpse of heaven. There's no cancer in heaven. There's no brokenness in heaven. And you say, well, well then why, why does this happen? Because we're on earth and heaven is in heaven. And one day there's gonna be a kingdom come where he will reestablish, and I'm not gonna get into eschatology with you, but I'm just saying, when he talks about his kingdom, his kingdom has been, his kingdom is, and his kingdom is coming. Only God can do something like that. Like, that's big, y'all. I can't even wrap my brain around that. Like, that's, that's phenomenal. And so I am so excited about the kingdom that's gonna come, where there's no tears, there's no hurt. There's no, but there is a kingdom reality that you and I should be experiencing right now. And, and I love this prayer. When the disciples were like, Jesus, how do we pray? How should we pray? And look what he says. First thing he says to them. Matthew 6, 9 and 10, pray like this, our beloved Father dwelling in the heavenly realms, may the glory of your name be the center on which our lives turn. I just want you to see the connection of what, we just, of what, of what just happened. He said the kingdom of God is gonna be experienced in its fullness now. That's the verse that we read before. Then he says, what do you need to do to experience it? Turn your lives back to God, put your confidence in the hope-filled gospel. And there's some of you that look at that and go, well, I've turned, my, I've turned my life to God. No, I'm talking about, do you realize repentance and obedience is a daily, sometimes momentary activity that every single day we're obeying and we're repenting? Because if you're like me, 
Like, there, there, there'll be something over here, and it's like a, it's like squirrel. Squirrel. What's that, squirrel? And we're over here, and we're over here, and we're distracted by so many things. And what is that? Repentance is when we turn our eyes off the stupid squirrel, and we get our eyes back on Jesus, and we say, Lord, I'm turning my eyes back to you. Well, I've already repented. I did it once. No, repentance is a lifestyle. Because I want what? What did David say? I crave for every moment. Every moment. For him to fill every moment of your life. For you to be able to experience it. What does experience mean? That doesn't mean just experience like, well, I know he's here, but I can't feel him. No, experience is all five senses. Where you're, you're, there's a taste, there's a feel, there's a smell. You're experiencing the goodness of God, the preciousness of the, like face to face with God that we're walking with him in that way. Come on, let's not wait till we get to heaven for that. Don't let weird experiences of, of what we've had in the past detour us from thinking, oh, that's, that's far-fetched. No, that's, a, that, that's imaginary. No, that's real. That's how we were created to walk with God. Do you know that before you ever got, ever got to earth, you came from a place called heaven? You were birthed in the very heart of God. You were spoken into being. You're not an accident or an incident. You were created in the very image of God. And come on, we, we, we get these earth suits on and we, we start smelling like earth and feeling like earth and then gravity starts taking, good Lord, there's not enough cream to put on my face to, get to, to, to lift, lift, you know, and, and to, but, but things just begin to happen because of the age of this world. Listen, that may happen to our bodies, but it doesn't have to happen to our spirits. There should be an expectancy and an urgency that happens. If I get a day older, then I'm a, de- listen, I have made more place, more of a place for Jesus in my life than I ever have have before like we're moving from glory to glory not worse to more worse I don't even know if I can put those two words together but I did do you see what this is the kingdom come this is not a top shelf concept this is supposed to be for everybody for everybody and there's this place For us to walk with the Lord where, man, every single day we get to experience his kingdom come. And when things happen in our lives, we don't see them as obstacles. Rather, we see them as an opportunity for the kingdom and the king to be glorified and exalted. You wake up not feeling well, that happens. Well, I guess his kingdom's not coming today. No, His kingdom's coming today, even in the midst of this sickness, even in the midst of what I'm facing right now. I will not settle for less than God's best, and I will glorify and exalt him in this situation, in this circumstance. When we're pressed on the outside, what do we do? We make a decision to say, he said I could experience his kingdom in its fullness. Jesus gets what he prays for. And so why, watch this, why did he say you pray like this? If his kingdom was just something automatic and we would experience it on automatic, then it would just happen. And I think sometimes the reason we disengage with our urgency and our hearts and passion in the kingdom and we get so easily distracted is because we think something should be on automatic instead of the engagement of day-to-day engagement with the Lord. This place with God is described as a secret place. Our relationship with him is described as a secret place. It's not a secret because he's playing hide and seek with you. Like you don't wake up and he, he decided he, he's not there with you. He's hiding around the corner and you, you no. It's, it's this paradox of having been found by Jesus, but waking up every day in the pursuit of where he is and what he's doing having been found, but also finding him. Isn't that beautiful? Like this this desire and this urgency. And can I just tell you, if there is a place right now in your life that's less than the fullness of the the kingdom of God in this experience, it's because God doesn't leave us. Somewhere our thoughts or the situation has caused us to take our eyes off of Jesus. Here's the simplicity of it. We overcomplicate it. Here's the simplicity of it. It's, where, it's not where you're going, it's where your eyes are looking. He said, turn your eyes to Jesus and put your confidence in the hope-filled gospel. 
then what begins, what begins to happen? Over a period of time, there's this journey because he's not gonna cause you to, he's not gonna call you anywhere that he's not willing to walk it out with you. That's the kingdom. That's uh, the fact that the kingdom isn't something that he gave for us to experience. It's something that he to experience with him. And then that, and so I just wanna give you hope today. If there's this place where you go, man, I just feel less than passionate. I feel less than a, than a sense of urgency when it comes to the things of the kingdom and the things of the Lord. And maybe there was a time in your life where you craved the things of God and the things of the kingdom. And now you're just like, ah, I just don't feel it like I used to feel it. Well, guess who wants you to feel it more than you wanna feel it? The master, your king, your Lord. He wants us to experience that urgency of the kingdom. So, so when Jesus invites us into this, it's not passive. It's not when you get a chance to. Maybe if you get some time. Oh, maybe if it's convenient. The kingdom is not always convenient, but the kingdom is now. The, the, the kingdom isn't always fit into your schedule, but you make a choice to fit the kingdom into your schedule. The kingdom doesn't, well, I'll get to that later when this ends or when that goes away. If the enemy can keep you waiting on the kingdom, Kingdom, instead of experiencing it now, we'll miss the assignment and the purpose that he has us here. And I'm not a scientist, so I don't remember how fast we're traveling around this globe, but it's fast. And if you just think about it, the older we get, life goes by. Can y'all believe like Christmas is happening like right around the corner? Already. Man. I mean, it's just Time goes faster and faster, faster. And what Jesus is standing before the people, what I believe he's standing before the church today, I'm hearing this, this same type message and the feel of this from other pastors. And there's this urgency of the kingdom that we've got to get a hold of, that we've got to, and you go, well, 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 is it something that's done to me? No, it's something that we've got to take hold of. Jesus stood before them and said, the kingdom is, 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 is at hand. The kingdom is here. It's time for the fullness of the kingdom. And then I want to look and I want to ask, Lord, I don't want to miss your kingdom. Don't let me get my eyes on me and not see and miss your kingdom. God, don't let me get my eyes on, on the political climate. Don't let me get my eyes on, on the economic climate. Don't, don't get, me, uh, get my eyes on the fact that my Amazon package is sitting in the ocean off the coast of California and it's never going to get here. Hey, I, I thought about maybe driving a truck on the side to see how much money I can make. No. And so uh, don't let me don't let me look at the don't look at the climate of the day or the or the sensitivity of this or the the anxiousness of this. No, 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 no. I'm making a decision for me and my house. We will experience the fullness of the kingdom now, not later, but right now. I don't want to miss this. And that's what he's saying. To, uh, don't miss this. Guys, the kingdom's coming. Don't miss this. How do you get to be a part of it? Turn your eyes, put them back on Jesus. Don't get your eyes off of Jesus. And tomorrow when you wake up and you get a phone call and there's this temptation to take your eyes off of Jesus, uh, you go, hang on one second. Jesus, I set my eyes on you. Okay, go ahead. And you're intentional about setting your eyes. What do you do? Your kids come in with questions. you your wife comes in with questions. Your husband comes in with, with questions. But because, listen, we're all affected by the world, but we don't have to be detoured by it. We're here. He says, listen, this world, whoo. Listen, if it was crazy when Jesus was alive, how much more? How much crazier is it now? And it'll get darker and darker and darker, but this is an opportunity for the church to get brighter and brighter and brighter, to experience his kingdom in its fullness. So in this Lord's prayer, he says, verse 10, manifest your kingdom realm and cause your every purpose to be fulfilled on earth just as it is in heaven. So, and you go, well, man, that sounds familiar. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth is what is the will of God it's his every purpose being fulfilled in my life thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven listen i want his kingdom to come in the earth 
I want, I want to see our city. I want to see, anybody else want to see revival in our city, revival in our schools, revival? Man, I, I do. I love that. I pray for that. We fast for that. We, we're believing for that. We're declaring that on earth as it is in heaven. But here's what I want to challenge you with. What if the prayer started with, thy kingdom come, thy will be done at home as it is in heaven? What if we're praying for the earth and wanting God to do things on the outside, but we've missed our very home and the place that he's given us to watch over? God wants to dwell in your home. How's your home? How's your house? As a, as a single person, are there things missing? You go, well, it's just me and my house and my dog or me and my house and my fish or me and my house and my Cheetos. But it's your house. What's the climate of your house? It's an Old Testament story. One of my favorite things to watch uh, or to 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 learn about was the felt board. Y'all remember the felt board in church? I learned so many Bible stories from from the felt board. And uh, they were a sticky board and they had these little felt pieces and they stuck in. So I I remember Saul and David and they were the two kings of Israel and Saul was tall and David was short. And so I always kind of connect with David in a very powerful, special way. I just think he was a man after God's own heart. He was a wee man, a short little guy. And I just... He's good with a sling. I'm good with a sling. And so, I mean, I just figured there was this connection there. And, but, but David and Saul, and there was this time that David became king. Saul was king. David became king. But before that happened, Saul came in. And the, the, the Ark of the Covenant, it was the actual box or the, the uh, it was more than a box. It was a, a giant box and it represented the very presence of God. God actually, that's, it says that's where his presence dwelt. And there was these really cool things in the, the, the Ark of the Covenant. If you love that subject, come back next week. We're going to get into what, what's inside that box. But, but Saul got it back from the Philistines. They were the enemies of that day and he got it back. But instead of bringing the presence of God to his house, he brought it to the neighborhood. So it's almost as though Saul said, God, we want your blessing near us, but we're not gonna celebrate with you. Like we want the blessing, but not the celebration. We want, we want you to be near enough so that we can be blessed by your hand, but we don't want you to be close enough, like all up in our business where, where you're Lord of our house. And you saw this division, you saw this thing between Saul. It wasn't, it wasn't in the, just the kingdom of Israel. It wasn't what was just happening on the outside in the big view. It started in the heart of Saul where he was cool having it close like down the street, but he didn't want the kingdom of God in his house. And I think sometimes we're tempted to want God to bless us and we want to see the things of God but we're kind of fearful sometimes of what it might look like if we really just gave it his way all the way in our house. Like, what would it look like for him to have his kingdom rule? What would it look like for him to be sitting right in the living room? What would it look like for him to be right in the middle of every conversation? What would it be like for him to be right in the middle of, of my kids' decisions and their future? What would it be like for him to be right in the middle of, of, of everything that's happening? Would we really want him right in the middle of everything? And we actually see Saul's kingdom and his reign come to an end. And it had so much to do with the way that he led. He didn't lead his life embracing the kingdom completely in his home. But then we see the contrast of that. We see David, a king who welcomes it into his house. We're gonna look at this more next week about the kingdom in our home. How does this, how does this look? How does the order of the kingdom look in our house? And then David penned this verse that we started with today. I want you to put it back up there. 
Come on, this is the guy who said, hey, I want you right here in this house. Here's the one thing that I crave from God, the one thing that I think I, that I want to, that I seek above all else. Listen, all through this, I was thinking about what's David saying? I don't care what this costs me. I don't care what I'm going to lose. I don't care what I may gain. I don't care about reputation. I don't care how hard it's, how I'm gonna, how hard I'm going to work. There is one thing. There's there's one thing above all else. I want the privilege of living with him. Of living with him. Not just him being near the house, but I want him in my house. Will you bow your heads and close your eyes today? I just want you to get real honest with the Holy Spirit. Just really honest with the Lord. In some way, somehow, have you gotten to the place where you're okay with the kingdom being near? But not in your house. It's okay to look at from a distance. It's okay maybe even to be experienced. Maybe the, the splash, it's kind of like when you go to a pool. It's, it's different to be splashed by somebody else in the pool. It's, it's another thing to be in the pool yourself. Jesus invites us to experience the fullness of his kingdom. And we're gonna dive into this more over the next few weeks, but I feel like what he is saying to us today is would you accept the great invitation once again, to come follow me. Come follow me. In greater measure, with greater sacrifice, with greater intensity, with greater urgency than ever before. To experience the fullness of the kingdom. And could our declaration and our prayer really be, your kingdom come, your will be done at home as it is in heaven. So Holy Spirit, right now we make the bold invitation for you to come and to have your way. Jesus, we're so thankful. Your kingdom was and is and is to come. Thank you for the reality that today you are standing before us, inviting us into the fullness of your kingdom. And God, today we turn to you, we repent. Perhaps we've gotten used to that, hey, you're close enough, or, but not in this moment-by-moment -moment fellowship. And we sense today there's room for us to grow. There's a place for us to go deeper with you. There's a greater measure of your presence in our home. There's a, there's a greater place in our walk with you. There's something that you're wanting to do. God, we just say today with faith, we want that. We believe that. Come on, will you just tell him from your heart? not just listening to my prayer, but your own prayer. Lord, come and do that in my home. God, come do that in my house, whatever that looks like, whatever decisions need to be made, what, whatever shifting and altering needs to be made. God, would you come and have your way that there's one thing that we crave, there's one thing that we desire, to dwell with you, to dwell with you, Lord, to dwell in closeness with you. And God, I just thank you for what this means. God, I, I see it almost as a road, a, a place that we've turned to and that we're headed down. God, I thank you for how you're gonna reveal yourself even this week in our time with you. I pray, Lord, that there would be others that would feel that stirring and that drawing that I have felt the last few weeks of you just drawing us to a greater and a closer place with you. You are our heavenly Father. Hallowed be your name. Holy holy, holy, worthy is the Lamb. And we come to you with great surrender. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I wanna take a moment to pray for you and with you if you don't have a relationship with Jesus. And perhaps you're in the room or you're, you're watching today online and you just say, Michael, I, there's something missing in my heart. I, I don't have this personal relationship with Jesus. Just in this moment, I, I, I recognize there is this need for him. That recognition is his presence. It's his spirit speaking to you. And the Bible says that when we believe in him, that that's what is required. Jesus paid the ultimate price by giving his life for you. But we have to receive that free gift. And today I wanna ask you, do you want to know Jesus in that way? Would you like to receive him and make him the Lord of your life?
And then there's others of you that maybe you've prayed that prayer before, but you just say, Michael, I'm not walking close with God. And I feel today there's been this drawing, just my time here, he's been speaking to me and I feel him drawing me close to him again. And I want, to re- I want that relationship restored and I wanna start fresh with him today. I wanna pray for you too. So nobody's looking around, everybody's heads bowed, their eyes are closed. This is between you and the Lord. I just wanna know that I'm praying with you. If that's you today and you're ready to say yes to Jesus for the first time or to come back to him at the count of three, I just want you to lift your hand up and put it right back down. One, two, three three. If that's you, come on, just lift it up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Man, it's so sweet. What you feel right now is his presence. You can feel it all in this room right now. Come on, people encountering Jesus for the first time. Christians, do you remember how that felt? To be far from God and then to be close to him in the moment, just in a moment. Anybody else, you just say, hey, I wanna be in on that prayer. I feel him, he's drawing me. I, today I'm ready to begin a relationship with him. Come on, if you're, if you're a Christian, I just want you to begin to pray. As a believer, I just want you to pray for the heart and the souls of the people around you. There's somebody else and I just wanna give it just a second. Maybe you're watching online and that's you and you just know right now, I need Jesus. I need to make him the Lord of my life. Here's right here, the Holy Spirit saying, you're you're in your late 30s, it's a man. You're in your mid, late 30s. And the Lord just says to you, hey, I've been after you. I've been drawing you. You can look back and right now, just over the last, you can see the signs and the places that I've been drawing you to myself. And today's the day of your salvation, would you say yes to me? That's what he's saying, would you say yes to me today? Who is that? You say, today, man, I feel him drawing me. And today I'm ready to surrender to him. Just a couple more seconds. Come on, don't miss this moment. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm gonna give you some words to pray. This is just some direction for you, just between you and the Lord. You can pray your own prayer or these words as we surrender our lives to Jesus. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending Jesus. Jesus, I believe you are real. I believe you really did come and do what you said you do. You promised it, you came, you fulfilled that promise. I believe that that you died on the cross. On the cross, you took my shame and my pain and God, you took everything that kept me from knowing you. You filled the gap between me and God. Thank you for that sacrifice. Then on the third day, you rose again and you were victorious, seated in heaven, alive and well. And today I put my trust and my confidence in you. This gospel message, You're my King, you're my Lord, you're my Savior. Today, I come back to you. If I'm returning to you, I I just pray right now, Lord, that, that I thank you that you receive me back with open arms, that there's a fresh start and that the old stuff is gone and the past is gone and the guilt and the chains of that stuff have no power over my life. And today, I thank you for just fresh breath of just fresh start in my personal relationship with you. Thank you that today's different, that I'm different, that I'm changed. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for bringing me back into relationship with you. Jesus, I'm so thankful that one day when this assignment is over, that I will get to see you face to face in a place called heaven. You've gone there to prepare a place. I can't wait to see you face to face one day. Would you come and like David prayed, would you fill every moment of my life with you? Your kingdom come in my life. Have your way. Use my life for your glory. In your name I pray, amen.